my lovely, lovely imps. I have to talk to you about a strange subject, which is pick me's. Okay. Um, some of you will be familiar with the term pick me and others of you won't be familiar with the term pick me. But recently, a pick me t TikTok video went viral and it really annoyed me and I want to talk about it. Okay. Uh, what is a pick me? A pick me is a slang term for somebody who uh, basically wants somebody who hates them to pick them to be, they want to be one of the good ones so bad. They want to be picked by someone who hates them so badly that they're basically willing to throw other people under the bus. It's usually used in, in context of a marginalized group. So for example, a pick me could be a super, super racist black person who is racist to other black people because they want to f they want white people to pick them to be like you're one of the good ones come on in it could be a trans person who hates all other trans people and says oh they're gross but i'm cool um it could be yeah it could be like i'm not like other girls that's another one that you see sometimes it's a girl who who d insults other women uh in in the hopes that they are picked um you know uh, so that's what a pick me is and I find pick me's uh, offensive and cowardly and spineless um, I think that it's extremely gross behavior to throw other people who have gone through the same struggle as you or a similar struggle as you under the bus just because you want to win over the approval of people who are very hateful and to a certain degree I can understand why this sort of phenomenon happens. In fact, there there is actually a, a much cleaner and more effective term, which is called defensive othering. Has anybody ever heard that term? Maybe you have. Defensive othering is, is a sort of academic description of the type of behavior that leads to somebody to basically act like a pick me defensive othering is the idea that out of a need or out of a perceived need uh uh to survive uh you you otherize you you make other people a bad you make them the other the dangerous other you treat other people like a dangerous other in order to improve your perception of your chances of survival. And um, I just gotta be clear to people, it doesn't work, okay? Those of you out there who are tempted to, to throw other people uh, under the bus uh, because, you know, maybe you think it would be for good optics, maybe you feel pressured because you think it'll make you survive, uh, it doesn't actually work. Um, it doesn't. It never works in the long run. Uh, and if you look at any of the disastrous uh, uh, genocides of history, even when someone uh, completely sells out the group that's being persecuted, in the end, they always end up persecuted too. They always end up uh, 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 just in, in, in just as bad of a situation. Even if it buys you a temporary reprieve, it can never free you from the root cause, which is that, that bigotry that drives hatred and prejudice and genocide. So with all that said, let me show you what got me mad. And we're going to talk about it a little bit and we're going to go through it because this is, um, this is some serious, uh, pick me defensive othering behavior if I've ever seen one now also I also want to state there is also the possibility that this person is not just doing a pick me that this person isn't just uh, Defensive othering but that this person is like a straight-up op. I do believe that's also a possibility. So keep that in mind uh, but this went viral and uh, let's watch it. Let's watch this clip and then we'll react to it. So join me as we watch an insufferable pick me rant. Here we go. On the right. And today I want to talk about why I'm offended. By Here we go. 
So it's day 10 of being on the right, and today I want to talk about why I'm offended by non-binary people as a transgender woman. When I look at my own transition and just transgenderism in general, to me, I think that people are either born a man or a woman. I think some people like myself are, are born men and they feel socially that they'd be more comfortable in the female binary and, and they go out of their way to do surgeries to make themselves physically appear at, as a woman, right? Or vice versa for transgender men. When it comes to non-binary people, it confuses me because you guys don't identify as a man or a woman. You identify as either Hmm. Wow. Almost like that's what non-binary means. Let's go. Something in between or, or something else entirely. I don't understand how you could know what something else is besides man or woman. And every time I ask that question, no one can tell me why they feel they're outside of the binary. I don't understand what happened to being a tomboy or a tom girl, right? And, and that's why I don't like the push. Hmm. like for children to transition nowadays anyways because a lot of kids are tomboys or tom girls and i feel like a lot of parents with woke culture today would be very quick to say oh my child's trans let's put them on hrt when they turn 13 or 14. no and it frustrates me when the non-binary community wants to consider themselves transgender and put them under the same umbrella term that that offends me because I had strong gender dysphoria to the point where I ha I changed my whole entire life and put my whole entire life on the line, right? Like taking hormones for the rest of my life is not 100% healthy for my body, but I had to do that because in my heart and soul, I knew I was not going to live a happy life as a man. So how are you as someone who identifies as non-binary and probably doesn't take HRT? I know hmm. some of you do, hmm. but for the most part, most of you don't, I'm pretty sure. How are you going to compare your life to mine and say it's the same thing? That, that is very offensive to me. A am I allowed to feel that way? Because if you take out the outliers of the few who... Much like the people who are having meltdowns over woke beer, you're allowed to feel however you want. Much like the people who have public meltdowns over being handed a happy holidays cup at Starbucks, you are allowed to feel whatever you want. Of course, nobody's telling you you can't have your feelings. Do you take hormones, which I don't even know why you would if you don't feel like you're 100% a man or a woman. Why would you want to take that certain gender's hormones? Hmm. Hmm. Viewers, do you think there's any reason why someone might take hormones? Could it perhaps be that they want the effects on their body that those hormones give them? or perhaps the effects on their mood that those hormones give them? Hmm. But regardless, for the most part, you don't, right? So what are you changing? Your pronouns? Maybe you hmm. have like some clothing that's gender non-conforming? I don't know, but I'm fine with non-binary people saying they exist, whatever, but don't call yourself transgender and say that your community is the same as mine because I've gone through serious struggles to get to this point. And I, I just don't think it's comparable at all. Like, I feel like it's the same thing as biological women being offended when trans women say they're the same thing as them, when we're not. So, it's date. so there you kind of have it at the end, right? There you have the, 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 tr the raw transphobia drop at the end where she says, oh, we're not the same thing. We're not, you know, it's, even though nobody on the planet argues that trans women and cis women are literally the same thing, Hence why there's a word cis women and a word trans women. Literally, nobody makes the argument that any two people are exactly the same. But see, what she's saying there is she's basically saying trans women shouldn't call themselves women. That's what she's, that's the argument she's implying, if you think about it for more than a second. Now, obviously, this whole rant is, is just a giant tragedy on so many levels. It is tragically uh, short-sighted. And of course, it's desperate. It, the desperation is exuding from every single pore on this woman's body. Now, I don't want to be too harsh on her because she did say that she's only uh, 10 days old as far as being right-wing is concerned. And, you know, maybe she hasn't learned all of the advanced arguments 
Sorry, uh, I, I, I just received word that there aren't any more advanced arguments. These are the exact arguments that uh, P died in the wool conservatives also make, almost as if she just sort of copied them from the propaganda that conservatives are constantly blasting out all day, every day, so that their followers will repeat like NPCs or worker bees. Um, yeah, uh, anyway, so there's a lot going on here that I could talk about. Uh, and I'm gonna start with, um, I'm going to start with one thing, which is, I guess I'm going to start towards the end and we're going to work through it. Uh, one of the things that she says that I think is very tragic here is this, uh, this sort of centering the argument on how miserable she is. I had to go through so much pain. I had to transition because I was tortured. I was tortured by, by my gender and I had no choice but to transition. Now, it is indeed true that uh, going through the wrong puberty can be a very torturous experience. It is indeed true that you can actually, that most trans people have to go through a lot of pain. But I find it odd that this person frames belonging to the transgender community specifically as a matter of how much you have suffered. Doesn't that come off as really weird to anybody else? Isn't that such a weird thing to do? To basically say, I don't think that non-binary people, who by the way, are definitionally transgender, transgender, uh, identifying as a gender different than the one that you were assigned. That is transgender, crossing gender, crossing gender lines. No matter how you formulate the definition of transgender, non-binary people are objectively transgender. There is no way that you can be a non-binary person who isn't transgender. But regardless of that, she insists that unless you have suffered as much as she has, you shouldn't be allowed to call yourself transgender. And I think it's very, very weird. I think it's extremely weird to fixate um, uh, uh, on, uh, uh, I think it's very weird to fixate on, on suffering as the core of transgender ID identity, especially because it erases and arguably even stigmatizes the idea that there can be joyful aspects or good aspects of being trans. Defining being trans by the suffering you experience means uh, that, uh, that, that people who experience an elation from their experience of being trans or who feel like they have been enlightened from the experience of living as a trans person, myself included. I am a trans woman. I'm a non-binary trans woman. That is the identity that I have uh, publicly uh, uh, told to people that is the identity that I have gone by for a very long time now since before I started streaming um, and while I have indeed experienced a lot of hardship um, which I've talked about very publicly as many of you know uh, I was literally disowned by my family uh, uh, it was a, a, a brutal experience uh, I, I had very severe and still do have severe dysphoria. Uh, and nonetheless, I don't think that's what makes me trans. And I don't think that that suffering is definitive of the trans experience. In fact, it makes me happy to know that there are trans people who aren't suffering, who don't suffer. That there are trans people who are able to discover their identity, who are able to say, no, actually, uh, I don't want to go through a male puberty. No, actually, I don't want to go through a female puberty and are able to achieve self-realization without that suffering. I don't think that suffering is in and of itself a virtue. So that's one of the first things I wanted to talk about in this is this very strange... Um, uh, self-flagellating, self-hating framing that demands that the only way that you can be a valid trans person is by uh, suffering a certain amount. I think that's very silly. And also, uh, I think it's suspect. It doesn't back the argument 
uh, that she is making because she makes the argument that uh, her suffering is what has made her trans, but non-binary people suffer a lot. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, non-binary people get targeted like crazy by transphobes. If you don't easily fit into uh, a single gender norm, you become a target immediately. Myself is an example. I tend to lean feminine in my presentation. I tend to lean feminine in my, uh, my, my choices of clothing. But as you guys will sometimes know, I have a few little masculine edges here and there, you know, things that would be considered masculine. And you know that people in my comments multiple times every single day say that because my hair is short, or because my voice is too deep or whatever, uh, that that means that I'm not, uh, I'm not a real trans woman or that I'm not a real woman or that I don't have any claim to femininity or that I shouldn't use she, her pronouns. It's every single day. It's, it's I, I, I get these comments. I get these deranged comments. I'm a non-binary trans woman. I lean feminine. I identify strongly with femininity and with womanhood, but I'm non-binary. I don't embrace the binary. I don't believe in the binary. Um, and yet I still suffer. But apparently that doesn't matter because in her mind, uh, only her flavor of suffering is the one that matters. You notice how convenient that is? This is, in the end, her, she sort of gives away her entire argument right then and there uh, by, by revealing her hand. She shows that it isn't actually about suffering. It isn't actually about that even it's just about her being able to push away a type of person that she doesn't like and of course there's other things she literally says i'm offended by them which if we're fair that is a giving away the game right there she's admitting to her prejudice but of course many people would say well you have to listen to her argument and her argument is a nonsensical one that further reveals that all she cares about is pushing away someone that she feels uncomfortable with Now let's talk about another part, which is this opening part. I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna go back through. We're gonna watch, we're gonna react to this a little segment here. I wanna play the clip and then I wanna react to it, okay? Kind of being on the right and stuff offended by non and just transgenderism in general. To me, I think that people are either born a man or a woman. I think some people- Okay, so people are either born a man or a woman. Now she is making, I, I, I'm going to be as charitable as possible here. I think that what she means to say is male or female, but once again, she's giving away the game, which is that she is arguing that people are born a gender, that she is conflating gender and sex. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna be charitable and say that perhaps she actually meant male and female here. I don't think she did, but let's say that she did. And let's continue like myself are, are born men and they feel socially that they'd be more comfortable in the female binary and, and they go out of their way to do surgeries to make themselves physically appear at, as a woman right or vice versa for transgender men when it comes to non-binary people it confuses me because you guys don't identify as a man or a woman you identify as either something in between or, or something else entirely okay so now this, of course, is really funny to me. I don't understand how you could know what something else is besides man or woman. That part is very funny to me just because it's just a self-report. It's just saying I'm too stupid to imagine that gender expression could have more than two versions, which, by the way, is self-evidently true. There are not just two gender expressions. There, as a matter of fact, there are not. Even if you're a Christian and you believe that there should only be two, the reality is that as a matter of fact, as a self-evident truth, there are not only two expressions of gender. The fact that there are people who deliberately break the lines of male of, of masculine and feminine of man and woman expression they exist 
even if you don't like them, they prove that there are more expressions. You just don't see them as valid. Now, in her case, she says, well, they can't exist. They, how can you be anything else? Well, the truth of the matter is people already are. Unless she believes that male and female is the exact same thing as man and woman, which is my suspicion. I, I noted that at the beginning, that she believes people are born as either a man or a woman. And then she says that she believes that they should so, they can socially transition. But that's not possible. If you believe, as she has demonstrated by her own words, if you believe that man and woman are biologically coded, that male and female are the same thing as man and woman, then she is as invalid by her own belief system as the people that she is talking about. Because in her worldview, you cannot change your biological sex. But if biological sex and gender are the same thing, which she seems to also be arguing, you cannot change your biological sex. It's, it's a wild, a uh, self-defeating argument that falls on itself. It's it, it's like a it's like witnessing a a stupidity collapse. It's like watching it's like watching a a a, a, a grain silo get demolished, where it just goes like and crunches in, and then all the the grain just dumps out. It, she didn't even think it through long enough. She's invalidating herself. This argument is pure cope. It's pure fuck you. I got mine. That's what this argument ends up being. It's, well, I get away with it, so I'm gonna make arguments that are, that invalidate you and me, but I'm gonna coast by on the fact that I don't, I'm not currently being persecuted. I'm gonna coast by on the fact that I'm pitching to an audience that will temporarily ignore me. You wanna know a perfect example? Blair White. Blair White is the is the perfect example of a trans woman who makes biologically essentialist arguments, conveniently ignores them about herself, only to have it blow up in her face. Do you guys remember it, this was this would have been like 2 years ago. On this channel we watched an interview between Lauren Witzke, a Nazi, and uh, and Blair White. And in that debate, the, the far-right Nazi over and over and over again, with support from the other two people in the call, the people, even the people who were supposedly on Blair's side were laughing along with her, called Blair White a man over and over and over again. Because in their view, Gender doesn't exist. There is only sex, which means you can't change it. You don't, this is a, a self-defeating viewpoint. This lady here, what's her name? Kelly Cadigan. Kelly Cadigan is making an argument that would put her in the exact same place that she is arguing non-binary people should be in. She is just as flawed as the people that she is mocking and poking at here. There is no amount of appealing to people who do not believe that you are uh, a valid human being. There is no amount of appealing to their rhetoric that will save you. They know what they believe about you. All of them, even if they keep it quiet while you're useful, believe that you're a man. They believe that you are invalid and they believe that you are a part of the groomer movement and they will turn on you. And they have, just like they've turned on, on Blair White, just like they've turned on all of their, uh, the, the gay people, the gays for Trump, they will turn on all of them. It's actually wild. It's actually wild to me. 
Uh, and also, it's funny to me that the that non-binary people are the people who get targeted by this stuff, uh, because non-binary people uh, are making the the most liberatory argument. They are saying the binary is nonsense, and and also it's an easy argument to make. No man lives up to the to a biological essentialist definition of manhood. No woman lives up to the biological essentialist definition of womanhood. None of them, not a single one, because those archetypes are, they're not real. They are in your head. People have made up what it means to be a man, what it means to be male, and what it means to be female. When you take gender and you try to make it the same thing as sex, you are engaging in a, in fantasy. Because as it turns out, having XY chromosomes, having XX chromosomes, and let's not even talk about intersex conditions, which are remarkably common. We don't even want to get into that. We're, we're playing on easy mode. We're going on, we're going on uh, easy difficulty right now. XY and XX chromosomes do not actually determine a, they don't determine a single uh, template of a person at all. They only determine a vague group of, of, of uh, an extremely vague group of, of tendencies. And within those groups, if you look at all of the males in the world, all people in the world who have XY chromosomes, you will see effeminate people, you will see short people, you will see tall people, you will see people with beautiful hair, you will see people with no hair at all. You will see people with facial hair, with no facial hair at all. And the same thing goes for XX. You go over the XX side, you will see tall, big, small. Uh, uh, you will see people with XX chromosomes who have a whole bunch of facial hair. You will see uh, people with XX chromosomes who have a whole bunch of body hair. You will see manly, XX people and femalely, womanly XY people. This is why we have a thing called gender. This is why we have a concept in our brains, a word, a, a idea, a meme, if you will, called gender, which allows us to talk about the social aspects uh, of, of our expression, of our engagement with a uh, a, 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 bi, a, a binary, again, we're playing on easy mode. Let's not go too far. We all know that actually sex isn't a binary, not even close, uh, but whatever. Let's, let's play on easy mode for a second. Gender is how the world socially engages with the sexual binary. And it's actually quite complex. Hence why transgender people exist. Hence why non-binary people exist. And these are people who acknowledge that this binary, a binary based on your chromosomes is nonsense. It is a nonsensical worldview. Most of you who are watching, I doubt in fact, basically any of you have ever actually had a chromosomal test. All of you have lived your lives by gender standards, your whole life based on assumptions almost no one gets genetic tests to find out whether they have XX or XY chromosomes. And guess what? Even if you do, that's not even a guarantee because a lot of people have, uh, there's actually a, a, a not super common, but a relatively common occurrence of chimerism, which is a form of intersex condition where some of your cells have XX and some of your cells have XY. But none of these conservatives go around with their card that, uh, that has their, their, their ge genetic test on it. None of them ever will. Of course, that would be also ridiculous and horrible, but they're, they're, they're hypocritical on that front. Instead, all of us, every single day, engage exclusively with gender. Nobody engages with sex. Ever. Almost ever. There's almost, almost never. The only real time that anybody ever truly engages with sex is with your doctor. That's basically the only occurrence that the average human being will ever have with their sex. And yes, of course, 
if we really want to have a, a proper philosophical conversation, you can talk about how sex, of course, itself is a socially constructed structure as well. It uh, obviously is. But we're trying to keep it a little bit simple to talk about the delineation between sex and gender. The idea that people are born a certain gender is absurd. No one is born liking the color blue or playing with trucks. Nobody is born liking dolls or anything like that. These are things that develop as you grow and as you experience the world and as you develop certain affinities. None of these things are biologically essential. They are social in nature. That is what allows the phenomenon of someone being transgender uh, to play out. Something, by the way, that she even talks about. Well, I'm transgender. I'm one of the good ones, you see? I'm transgender. Well, how can you be transgender if you don't actually even believe in gender? How can you actually be trans? Well, and the answer, of course, is that, that all of the conservatives laughing at her as they use her as a tool against other trans people are really thinking in their mind is, well, we all know you're not actually a woman. That's what they're all saying at the end of the day. But me being Chad, big brain and spine pilled acknowledge that gender is a construct that we have the ability to free play with gender because gender is defined by us. Gender is expressed by us. We can take what we want from the gender trees and create our own expression that makes us happy and joyful. Do you see why the gender ascensionist position, my position, is so liberating and also simply ac more accurately describes the world than this deranged mental pretzeling that these people engage in? It's absurd to me. The pygmies are so miserable. They're such miserable people. They're bending over backwards for people who want them in camps. The people that she is appealing to currently spend their time watching and promoting videos and creating videos, calling every gay person and every trans person a groomer. The groomer panic that has been spreading across the internet is indiscriminate. They call it to, they call Dylan Mulvaney a completely and utterly harmless uh, TikToker who makes slice of life goofy content a groomer. They call anyone they don't like a groomer. You wanna know what it means in their head? In their head, a groomer is if you're LGBT. If you're LGBT, in the minds of a conservative, they think you're a groomer. You're not gonna win any pick me points from people like that. And if you do, it's gonna put you in more danger. So maybe consider that before you kick out the ladder from underneath you. Because uh, that ladder might be your only means of escape. Be a little careful. Anyway, uh, I can't stand pick me's. Uh, pick me's make me sick to my stomach. They are the weakest and most cowardly people on the planet. And some people might go, you should have, you should have, uh, uh, you know, you should have mercy on the pick me. They're just scared. We're all scared, okay? Nobody is not scared in a time in which you have uh, uh, deranged conservatives with money and power who literally think that you can use the internet to cast a spell on them that will turn them or their kids trans. I'm not kidding, by the way. We just watched a video from popular right-wing uh, talking head Michael Knowles in which he unironically argued that magical sissy hypnosis porn is a driving factor in the creation of new trans people and that he was so afraid that he wouldn't even look at it because he was afraid it would melt his brain and turn him gay. No. Nope. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to I'm not going to play nice with people who collaborate with that type of madness. Not going to happen. Just not going to happen. Nope. 
everyone is scared. Of course, that's fucking scary. That's demented. And by scared, I mean, uh, wow, that's, that's crazy. I sure hope I don't have to deal with that. I sure hope that these psychos don't take over my area. The real people who are suffering the most are kids. And also, let's talk about this. Let's go to one more thing on her video that I want to yell about. Here we go. Where is it here? I want to get to her point here. Where she says this. This one's another really funny one. Here we go, right here. Let's watch this real quick. Builder outside of the binary. I don't understand what happened to being a tomboy or a tom girl. First of all, tomboy and tom girls are out of the binary. By definition, how stupid can you be? The term tomboy refers to a girl who acts like a boy. That is definitively non-binary, you idiot. You absolute fucking idiot. Right? And, and that's why I don't like the push like for children to transition nowadays anyways, because a lot of kids are tomboys or tom girls, and I feel like a lot of parents with woke culture today would be very quick to say yeah, with woke culture today, which is why there are literally hundreds and hundreds of bills being pushed through to try and prevent children from even getting medical, being seen by a doctor to get help. That, that's the woke culture. Of course, in reality, the absolute fucking ins absurdity, the, the gall that these idiot conservatives have. Do you guys, ha have any of you, do you guys remember how kids in your school who are tomboys or tom girls? We'll talk about that in a second. Do you guys remember how tomboys were treated in your school? Anybody? Anybody have any memories of how well tomboys were treated? Because let me tell you, I have a lot of memories of how tomboys were treated by conservatives. I lived in a conservative area in a conservative family, went to schools that were predominantly full of conservatives. And guess what? They treated tomboys like fucking shit. They treated them like crap. And Tom girls don't even get me started. First of all, that term was never used. You want to know what term they would use? Faggot. That's the term that would be used. Nobody used the term Tom girl. They would call you a faggot. If you were a boy who liked girly things, you would be called ruthlessly a gay faggot. You would be beat up. You would be bullied. So I wonder, whatever happened to the tomboys and the tom girls, huh? Whatever happened? You fucking ghouls. This is what we call a concern troll, by the way. Concern trolling is when you pretend to care about something that you actually don't give a shit about or have the opposite of care about, that you actually hate. This is blatant concern trolling. Conservatives have never cared about tomboys. They have always bullied tomboys. Conservatives have never cared about faggots. They have always called us faggots. And the idea that woke culture is leading people to, uh, to, to rush their kids into HRT is so fantastical. You may as well say that there are secret gender gnomes that are giving magical mushrooms to children that turn them into the opposite gender. It is deranged. It is not easy to get gender care in this country, especially if you happen to live in one of the many now deranged red states that have literally outlawed your ability to get medically necessary care. Medically necessary care, which has been firmly re studied the world over and proven to be very safe. They won't even let Young people have puberty blockers. Puberty blockers, which just simply delay puberty. That's all they do. Puberty blockers aren't hormones. It just gives kids what they say they want. They say they want kids to be able to figure it out. That's what puberty blockers are for. The puberty blockers prevent the negative, the potentially very negative experience of a forced puberty from happening to give the kid time to figure out their identity. And they say they want that while out of the other side of their mouth, banning those exact things and calling people groomers.
fuck this person, fuck the conservatives, and just remember, we will not rest until we have complete and utter liberation. Gender liberation, sexual liberation. No more of this cowardly, spineless, uh, duplicitous, backstabbing, weak, and disgusting behavior. Enough. Enough. They are liars through and through. What they want, there is only one thing that they want. They want trans people to go away. They want trans people to disappear. Whether they have to kill you, whether they have to take away your medical care, whether they have to make it impossible for you to change your name so that people on the street and uh, can constantly identify you and treat you like shit, whether they make it so that you can't actually get access to hormones so that they can continue to tell you that you're some sort of a failure because you can't actually get hormones like they say that would make you, like they say, oh, well, why aren't you trying hard enough? Well, maybe it's because you can't get access to hormones. Oh, well, you don't pass well enough. Well, maybe it's because I couldn't get access to hormones and surgeries and I couldn't get puberty blockers. Had you ever thought about that? The answer, of course, the reason why all of their arguments don't make any sense, the reason why none of it adds up and it seems so contradictory and hypocritical is because they just want you dead. That's it. That's all that conservatives want. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. That's what they want. They'll never admit it because they know that that sounds bad. Well, a few of them admit it. People like Michael Knowles will admit it when they say transgenderism must be eradicated from the public entirely. They'll admit it, but the rest of these fucking spineless fucks recognize this, my lovely imps. Recognize this. And the sooner you realize that the actual conservative argument is not about concern for children, it's not about concern for health, that all that information already exists out there, if they actually cared, they could learn. They could go and look at the studies around health and they could find, wait, the health risks are not very high. They could go find, wow, actually the outcomes for people who are allowed to transition are really, really good. They actually live better lives. They're more likely to be, uh, uh, to, 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 to not be suicidal. They're more likely to be able to hold down a job. They're more likely to be able to engage healthily in the social environment. They could see all these things. It would be easy, but they don't. Because at the end of the day, the only thing they care about is imposing their worldview. And imposing their worldview means erasing trans people. And it means erasing gay people too. And then it means subjecting women. Sorry, subjugating women. Subjecting women is, works as well. It means subjugating black people. It means subjugating immigrants. Until we're right back into Christian monarchy. That's the worldview that most of these, these these NPCs, like this person right here, whether she knows it or not, whether Kelly Cadigan knows it or not, that's the worldview that she's repeating. She's taking talking points from people who believe in a Christian theocracy and boosting them out in the name of, well, maybe they'll spare me. They won't. You will not be spared. We're getting bonus here. Oh, uh, 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 conservative pick me? Let's find out, here we go. Let's find out here. And today I'm gonna be burning the pride flag. Since speaking my political truth, I've been met with nothing but cult-like ideology from the left, and I'm not okay with that. It is not hate speech for me to say that minors should not be transitioning, especially when I'm someone with personal experience transitioning as a minor. It is it's always, it's always, Every single time she's like, um, I pass, uh, I pass all of you who don't pass. You should just die. Basically you, why don't you pass well enough? You're not trying hard enough. Uh, I got to transition as a minor, but nobody else should be allowed to literally just fuck you. I got mine. Fuck these people into the ground. It's not hate speech for me to say that your pronouns are conditional. Anyone in America that has freedom of speech can call me a he, him, and that's their right. Even if pathetic weak you people are weak you're so weak and it's disgusting it upsets me 
It is not hate speech for me to say non-binary people are not the same thing as transgender people. It is not hate speech for me to say that you need true gender dysphoria to be- True gender dysphoria star means the gender dysphoria she has. Okay, this is her talking about gender. Let's see. Seamlessly going from anti-trans NBK takes into defending racism. Oh, this looks interesting. Hey, this is nominal Naomi. I love Naomi. Naomi is great. Nominal Naomi is wonderful. All right, let's go. Women are right. There are two genders. Do you what believe, are you talking about? Do you believe that whatever is normal is, is morally right and correct? Like the, the majority of people. Okay. So if we go back like a couple hundred years, it was pretty normal to own slaves. Is that right or correct? God, why are we talking about slavery? Because I'm showing you why the ad populum fallacy is a logical fallacy. Honestly, back then, a lot of black people participated in the slave trade themselves, so. Yeah, that doesn't make slavery right. Are you trying to defend slavery? It was slavery? a product of the time, dude. It Are was you a trying to defend of... slavery? Oh my god! Did you not see Matt Walsh's new video on this topic? I did, and I think that defending slavery is fucking cringe as hell. Whatever is normal is like right. Is that correct? Because, because man and woman are right. There are two genders. Do you what believe, are you talking about? Do you believe that whatever is normal is, is morally right? And oh, wait, it looped. It looped. Sorry, I didn't catch that it was looping. Black people not only participated in capturing... Oh, boy, here we go. ...defending slavery, but I think we're illogical if we didn't realize that a lot of Black people enjoyed being slaves. Back what? Slave oh, my God! Holy shit! This cat lady over here? Holy shit! Slavery was a thing. Um, how do you know that Black people enjoyed being slaves? I mean, it's just in history. I've like read about it. like a lot of black people. Not um, yeah, it's in history. Like totally. I read this history book. It was, um, it was, uh, it was written by this guy named, uh, Adolf, Adolf something. Um, he wrote a book and it was like totally in history though. Not only participated in capturing slaves, but a lot of black people enjoyed being slaves. Cause of course, when you're, when you're really? brought up doing something like being a slave your whole life, it's all, you know, I'm sure a lot of slaves probably enjoyed it and were happy because that's the only lifestyle they were aware of. That's crazy. Can you not like, can you not think like that? Like, is it really that dense? I have of never like, heard of somebody enjoying having to work countless hours on a plantation, being dehumanized and whipped and told they're not human and being beaten within an inch of their life and being raped. I'm not saying that. I don't okay. think that people I'm enjoy just saying that. You can't deny the fact that they were probably slave owners that just like there were really bad ones, there were probably slave owners that probably treated their slaves really nice too, right? Holy shit. This lady is just, so she's just a Nazi then, right? So it's not just, she's not just a pick me she actually believes that slavery was good. Like you have to be, that's like pushing into Nazi. It's, it's at least white, it's, it's at least white supremacist. So she's like Ku Klux Klan. What, what's her What's her actual name? Her actual, her username is uh, Kelly Cadigan, more like K Ku Klux Kelly Cadigan again. There we go. We, we're gonna call her, that's her new name on this channel, Ku Klux Kelly. All right, let's see In this one. In that time period anymore. But you're defending slavery. I'm not defending it. I'm saying it was a product of the time. You said that black people enjoyed being slaves. I think there were probably a good majority of black people who back then were born and raised as slaves, probably because that's the only thing they knew. It was the environment they grew up in. If they had a slave owner who treated them well, they probably enjoyed their lives, a few of them. I think it's illogical to believe that every person who was a slave back then hated their life. I truly think that's illogical. I do. I'm pretty sure that being owned is not a good thing. Because you grew up in this generation, and this is what you've been. <laughs> what a what an idiotic argument! Uh, yeah, you just you didn't grow up in the time. If you'd been a slave at the time, you would have been. You would have liked it. Yeah, why don't you volunteer to be a slave for a week? Oh my God, she lost tens of thousands of subscribers after this debate. Yeah, of course. And we know these things now. No, then, not just because I was societal standards were not created yet. Not just because I grew up in this generation, but because I can think logically and morally on this topic and why it is unfair to own another human based off of their birth as having like a certain skin color, for example. That, that's unfair. You're pretending and like I'm saying it's okay to own slaves now because that's not what I'm insinuating. You literally made the argument 
that actually slavery isn't that bad as long as slavery is normalized. And the truth is, yes, actually it is. Slaves didn't like being slaves. Slaves rose up and killed their, their slave owners based, by the way, all the time. Obviously. How stupid can you fucking be? How fucking stupid can you be? And in the truth is, this isn't stupidity. This is malice. This is a worldview. She believes that slavery isn't that bad because she's white and she would have never in any point in history have had to worry about being a slave. She gets to pretend, oh, wouldn't it be funny if we had slaves? Tee hee. You are defending slavery. I'm not defending it, I'm just- Yes, you are. You are downplaying the negative effects of slavery by saying there were slaves that liked slavery. You are saying slavery wasn't that bad. That is defending slavery. How insane. Giving you the facts. Aren't you all about facts over feelings? Yeah, and I, I, I believe that slavery is immoral. Right, but, and I do too. But the fact was back then, I think you're illogical if you think that some of them didn't enjoy being slaves or enjoy their lives. Why would anyone enjoy being a slave? That's the environment you grew up in. That's all you've ever known. So if you grew up in that environment and you have a slave owner who treats you well, that, that's just all they know. So they probably were happy about it. They didn't know freedom. Why is it so hard for you to understand this? What 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 is like a, a slave over an owner treating their slave well look like? I mean, back then, I'm sure some of them. I'm pretty sure they fed them, right? Or probably that like they weren't whipping anybody or like not tormenting anyone. Just like I don't have like specific oh, details. Holy holy shit! <laughs> She really is very stupid. No, this is malicious. This is, this is, I mean, yes, there is a overall aura of stupidity around her. Like you do have to be like, you have to be willing to act very stupid, but this is malice. This is like pure malice. She knows for a fact, she knows for a fact that she would never like being a slave. Not even if she grew up in a time where slavery was normalized. Slavery is a self-defeating institution because it, 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 it requires immiseration. Slavery functions on making people miserable. You do not have slavery if there are happy people. People have to be broken and beaten into being slaves. It has to be constantly upheld. There is no society where people are just like, yeah, I'm totally, I'm totally willing to be an unwilling slave. Otherwise, they're not slaves. If people are like, hey, I want to do this thing. I want to work with you and you're going to treat me good. That's not slavery. It's an inherently oppressive institution. It's an inherently deleterious institution. She knows it's wrong. Of course she does. I would absolutely love to debate this KK Kelly person. Okay, so as, long as, so as long as they're like, as long as you're working inhumane hours on plantations, but you're being fed. Then, then that's a good thing. Again, I'm not saying slavery that. was a good thing. You're not gonna like try to make it seem like that's what I'm saying because let's, okay. I don't know what you want me to say. If you want to believe that every person back then who was a slave hated their life, go for it. Okay, so I, I guess like, I'm just trying to illustrate why the ad populum Inc Absolutely incredible. All of this was just to point out a, a small fallacy and she literally bent over backwards to defend uh uh to defend uh slavery incredible call her kit kat kelly no i will call her ku, ku klux kelly that will be my that will be my my uh finishing move Incredible. All right, everybody. Well, that's all that we have for the Ku Klux Kelly segment. Uh, what a fascinating revelation. Once again, don't forget to press the subscribe button, ring that bell, press the like button, and leave me a comment. It means the world to me.